Hey guys, what's happening? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the Sony Alpha A6300 mirrorless digital camera with the 16 to 50 millimeter um, kit lens. Camera goes for 1148 approximately US with the kit lens. Basically, what she features is a new 24 megapixel sensor, so it's the same resolution, but it has incredible autofocus abilities now because it has 425 phase detection points. That's really impressive. It also does 4K video and 1080p. It has 120 frames per second for slow motion recording. I just wanted to go tell you one more thing about the sensor. It actually has copper wiring, uh, which makes the sensor itself like thinner, and that allows more light to come in, which gives you better high ISO ability. So the high ISO is cleaner than the A6000. It's noticeably better. The camera also has S-Log3 Gamma for video and display assist functions, which is great if you're a video shooter. Built-in Wi-Fi and NFC is nice for connecting this stuff wirelessly. 4D focus works along with the 425 faves detection points. Up to 11 frames per second shooting. Incredible. The ISO maxes out at 51,200, which is, you know, pretty high. And uh, the weight of this bad boy, it's 14.25 ounces or 404 grams with the battery and memory card. The screen on the back is 3 inches, high resolution, and it tilts up and down, not 100%. It doesn't tilt like 180 view, so you can see it from the front, but it does have a nice angle of uh, range there. All right, guys, from the side here, you have on the kit lens a power zoom feature. And you can actually zoom in and out. Let me just turn the camera back on. It actually just shut off right at that time. And you can zoom so you can see how it affects it. You can see the screen on the right just that little bit. But this is how you zoom the lens. It's not a manual zoom lens. You have to actually use this toggle here. And I got used to it after a couple of minutes. I do kind of like it. Although I do prefer the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens over this power zoom lens. But the advantage to this lens is when you shut the camera off, the thing collapses to like very little, as you can see. All right, so I just wanted to show you over here this new door. And it's got a little notch here for your fingernail. You can just pop it out like so, see that? And here is the new microphone port. The A6000 does not have that, and it has a smaller door because it only has to cover the two, you know, micro HDMI and uh, USB ports there. So I just want to give you a quick showing. It's a better design, too, the way it locks closed like that. Uh, I like the design better. Alright guys, so I just wanted to go over this camera in hand a little bit here so you can see what it looks like in my hand. And as you can see, it fits quite good. My fingers are able to get in there behind this particular lens. Larger lenses might suffer a little bit, but they tend to taper out right about here anyway. So the build quality on this camera is noticeably better than the A6000. It has the magnesium alloy body similar to the A7R2. It also makes it noticeably heavier. What I wanted to show you in particular was how uh, when you have a tripod plate mounted, the screen opens just like you would expect. It does ex it does hinder it a little bit on the bottom side when it hits it like that, of course. I'm just going to turn it on, show you how fast it boots up. You can see, ready to fire, very quick. And you just hit this button to pop the flash up, like so. And on the top here, this thing comes off, as you saw when the camera was spinning around. And the only other thing I wanted to show you was on the bottom here, you got the battery door and the memory card goes right there and the label faces towards the door. See that? So the label faces that way, like so. It's a little bit finicky to get in. And then the battery locks with this little tab there. And let's pull the battery out. Alright, and then on the top here you got this control knob and the feedback is quite good on this knob. When you're in aperture priority mode, or I'm in manual mode right now, let me change it to aperture priority. This knob changes the aperture by default, but you can configure that. And the knob here also, see how it's changing the aperture as well? So in manual mode, if I go back to manual mode, this one will change the shutter speed, and this one is changing the aperture. See that? So you got aperture and shutter. And then if you want to change your ISO, you have to hit this button on the side. So it's not really a tri-navi design. It's only like a dual navi design, <laughs> unfortunately. I was hoping they'd bring back the tri-navi at some point. But a couple other things I just wanted to show you was the feedback on this wheel. This wheel here is really easy to turn. It's like super easy. It could actually use even a little more dampening possibly. And then this knob on the top is significantly harder. It's like three times the resistance I would say at least. 
So that's a nice, you're not going to accidentally turn this so easy, where this one here you can accidentally turn. Um, the record button here for video is still not in the greatest spot. They could have put a little bit more protection on that because you can accidentally press it. The mode dial takes a bit of effort to uh, turn. And then you have the on and off toggle here. You can see that. And there's also another custom button. The shutter button is right there in the center. And when the camera closes, you can see it collapses down quite good. Let's turn it off there. And then you got the EVF here. I'm sorry about all the dust, guys. I've been using this thing for a while now. And, uh, you know, I've been having it in my camera bag, in my pocket, and things like that. So it's really dusty. But the EVF automatically turns on when you put your eye near it. I'll show you. You can see it's got a sensor right there. And it'll switch to the EVF when you get close. See that? It automatically switches. All right. Let me, uh, let's move on here. I'll show you what this camera can do in the real world. I'll show you how to use a bunch of settings in the lab so you can get the most out of your camera. And then I'll move on to show you what the images look like on my computer so you can see them really up close, 100%, you know, crop, high ISO, and all sorts of stuff like that. All right, guys, so if you're new to the A6300 and photography in general, you're going to want to use auto mode here. Um, auto mode is quite powerful. It actually analyzes the scene and it'll decide what settings to use for you um, in almost all situations. And it does a really good job. It has scene recognition technology, so it'll recognize if it's a portrait, it'll recognize if it's a landscape, things like that. So when in doubt, just use full auto. Now, scene mode I wanted to show you also because here you can select if it's a sports mode or if it's a portrait or if it's a landscape and I did some testing with this um, as I always do and it works awesome I mean landscape photos come out sharper with better greens and blues for example um, portraits will sharpen the eyes a little bit add a little skin smoothing things like that it'll optimize the uh, photos for you based on what scene you're shooting so I highly recommend checking that out I also used panorama mode it's a really fun mode and it looks like they fixed it because now the shutter speed will go higher than 1 one sixtieth or 1 sixtieth of a second, which means you'll get sharper shots when doing those sweeping pans. In the past, um, the shutter speed used to lock out at 1 sixtieth of a second. And when you're sweeping from left to right, uh, sometimes it would come out slightly soft. So it seems like they fixed that. But here's video mode. These two modes you can customize, so you can make them whatever you want. And then that M is manual mode. S is shutter priority mode, and aperture priority mode is what I usually use, and that's what I'm going to use right now. So P is just program mode, and that is basically full auto, but it will allow you to change a couple of settings. All right, so right now I'm using the zone focus, and I have it set to the left, so I just want to show you how to change that. If you hit the function button here, like so, you can navigate right here to the focus area mode. Check that out. You click that, and then it pops up on the left-hand side and you can select which mode you want. This is wide, it'll use the entire sensor pretty much and decide what to focus on. Zone I kind of like, when you select that you can move from right to left. See that? How it's moving across the screen and then you can select where you want. I have it set to the left side right now, so the left side is going to be the priority. And let me zoom in and show you what I mean. If I focus, it's now going to focus on the left side of the scene. See that? So it works good for the lab scene. But if you change it to another mode here, you can go down to center area, and center area is good for doing stuff like this. If I want to loosen the uh, camera and then aim down at the train, you can use center mode, and you can just see how fast the focus is. All right, guys, so now I'm zoomed into 50 millimeter using the kit lens, and I just wanted to give you some more um, sample footage to show you how good the focus speed is. So here it is on the train, there it is on the background, and there it is on the lights. So you can see how fast the focus is. It works really, really good. And it's noticeably faster than the A6000. In my opinion, it seems to work better. And noticeably faster. So now I just want to see how it tracks on the train here. So what I want to do is I want to change the focus mode. I'm going to show you how to do that. You just go in here and you go to focus mode. And I'm going to put it on autofocus continuous. And it's not letting me do that. See how it's grayed out? I have the drive mode set to self timer. See that? So it gave me the information. See how I have the two second self timer selected? There we go. Put it back to single shooting. All right, so back to center. And now I'm set to, if I change my display mode, if you hit this display button here, you can change the display mode and see all your settings a little bit better. So now I can see here 
um, all my different settings. And notice how I have it on AFA. I gotta go back there and change the autofocus mode to continuous now. See that? Now AFC is available. Autofocus continuous. So now if you hold the shutter down, it'll constantly focus. If you hold it down halfway, it'll just automatically change. See that? You don't have to hit it like over and over to make it change. All right, so now we're just going to see how this works on the moving train. All right, so let's see how she tracks. I'm using the center, center focus area. And it seems to be tracking really well. Staying green the whole time. There we go, lost it there. Just trying to find something to focus on. Where is that train? There it is, boom, nailed it. Picked it right back up again. All right, so it looks like it's working extremely well to me. All right guys, I just wanted to show you in this menu here under option four, you have tracking sensitivity and tracking speed. All right, I just wanted to show you guys what uh, the high speed shooting looks like. See how fast that shutter is? All right guys, so to get to that high speed shooting mode, you just gotta hit this button here on the left side by default. And then you can see over here on the left side of the screen, you have the high speed shooting option. And if you hit the arrow, you can change it to mid, low, high, and so forth. Self timers right here, and you got 10, five, and two. That's a nice feature. I use that all the time, especially when taking lab photos and stuff. You know, you don't want to touch the camera at all. You just set the self timer, hit the button and you let go. And then the camera will fire for you, watch. So you lock on, hit the button now. I'm not touching. So you, you get, you know, you're not gonna get any camera shake. So that's a great feature, the self timer. I use that all the time. Uh, as opposed to using a cord or a remote control, for example. But the normal shooting mode is the single shooting. That's what I normally use. And you can see you focus there and it just fires like so. All right guys, so I just wanted to show you some of these picture effect modes and a couple of other things on this camera here. But first, what you gotta do is you gotta change the image quality. Watch when I try to go to um, a picture mode. If you go to the menu here, uh, notice I have quality set to RAW plus JPEG. And that's no good when you wanna use special features like um, picture effects. See how picture effect is grayed out right now? That's because I have the quality set to JPEG standard or JPEG plus RAW, sorry. So let me go back switch that to the JPEG. So when you use these special features, you gotta have it on JPEG mode because the camera is basically doing Photoshop for you. So it's doing all these effects and it's not gonna do that with a raw file. Um, so it's gonna have to save it out as a JPEG. So now that I have JPEG quality selected, I can go into the menu. And let me just scroll over to the right here. I think it's under number five. Number five, now look at picture effect. It's set to illustration mode, see that? And if you go in there, you have all these different colors or all these different modes, toy camera, pop color, posterization, retro, soft key. And you'll notice how some of these have a little arrow there. See the little arrow? That means that you can go to the right and select more colors or more, more options. So if I scroll down, this high contrast black and white is pretty awesome too, by the way. Um, soft focus. HDR painting, all these things are fun to use. I highly recommend trying them. But illustration mode I like in particular, and you can change it to low, medium, and high. And what it does is it gives you this cartoon effect. I have the self timer. I have the self timer set to two seconds. But watch what happens when it, see that? Look at that. Look what it does. It turns it into this cool cartoon effect. So that's why you have to have it in JPEG mode for features like that, because it processes the photo and then saves it out. And it's not gonna be able to do that with a raw file. All right, so let me go back to the menu. Turn picture effect off. Not, don't wanna use that anymore. So shut that off. All right guys, I just wanted to go over the ISO real quick and you can get there just by hitting this right side of the navigation wheel here. And notice how you have auto ISO uh, multi-frame noise reduction. That's what that stands for. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take multiple frames and then combine them together to get the least amount of noise possible. And then if you go to auto, notice here how you can adjust your minimum and maximum. If you hit the right toggle, you can go over. See that? And now I can adjust the minimum ISO to whatever I want. Really cool feature. And maximum, you can raise that all the way up, or you can keep it, you know, I don't, if you don't want to use any more than ISO 6400 in auto mode, you could lock it there. So a great feature having custom auto 
ISO, you know, high and low. And I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. Alright guys, another thing I wanted to show you was the dynamic range optimizer and HDR feature, the auto HDR, and that's right here. If you hit the function button, it brings up this menu. You can scroll to this DRO slash auto HDR. This is an awesome feature. Auto HDR, and notice how it has the little arrow. So then you can go to the right, change the level that you want, all the way up to 6, or you can do auto. I'm just going to leave it at 4, and I'm going to show you how it works. So now I have it set. I'm just going to hit the shutter. See that? It took multiple shots, and now it's processing, and it's going to give me the result. So there you go. It's great for high dynamic range scenes, and it works very similar to the multi-shot noise reduction feature, how it takes multiple frames. So you're going to want to hold the camera very steady when you do that. Um, ideally, you want it on a tripod, but you can do it handheld. I use it handheld all the time. You just got to be super steady with it. All right, guys, so here's where you set up your video. And right now I have it set to this option. I don't have it set to the 4K option. Here's 4K. Uh, I just have it set to regular HD, which is fine for my purposes. So I'm just leaving it at standard HD. And the record setting I have is 24p at 50 meg, as you can see. And there's obviously all these other options there, which are quite powerful, especially the 120 for slow-mo. But anyways, I just wanted to show you how I had the camera set. And what I wanted to do here was a quick video test. I have it in manual mode. So I'm going to change my ISO to 100. Let's see how that works. And then I'm going to change shutter speed to 1 50th. Like so. And my exposure is still a little low. So I'm going to raise the exposure to 200. See how that looks. And you can see here in the center, right there, the exposure comp is now at zero. So I have it set to manual mode on the dial here and 1 50th of a second shutter speed, um, f5.6, ISO 200. And I just wanted to pan up here to show you how the focus transition looks. And you can see, did a quite a good job there. Nice and smooth, pretty fast. All right. So also wanted to show you how the zoom looks during video. You can see it goes nice and slow. And that's as fast as I can go. And you can see it bops around a little bit. Where's Jace? Where'd he go? There he is! You got two guns? What are you doing? Back to pop the Easter. Chocolate. You eat that chocolate? Is it yummy? <laughs> like a cool adventure book. I know. Oh boy. And an activity book. We could use that for your club. Yeah. How cool is that? How did the Easter Bunny know that you wanted to do an adventure club? I told him. You told him? When? I told him. On you the wished phone. for it? Oh, you called him? 1 uh 800 -huh. Easter Bunny? Yeah. <laughs> Real badges. So you, you get an adventure badge or something? No, it's like you, you, you decorate your rock for, because you. you... What I got here now, I got the cannon. 24 to 105 f4L lens mounted with the Metabones 4 adapter and I wanted to show you how the focus speeds were when using this on the A6300. So you can see here it's focusing on the train, move it to the background and you can see it's working quite well. You can also see the stabilization on the lens is working. That's why you're getting that little bit of a like panning effect there. That's the image stabilization. So stabilization works, focus speed is excellent. Really good. All right, there it was a little bit slower, but overall, excellent. All right, guys, what I got on here now is the killer Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter. All right, so look at how this works. Let me show you. It's kind of heavy, so I got to use two hands here. 
the uh, lens has a, a, a badass tripod collar mount, so that's what I'm using. But I don't have any image stabilization, so you're going to see it's a little shaky. But look at the focus. Look how good this works. You could totally use this for bird photography. Get that extra reach thanks to the crop factor. And the focus speed is totally acceptable. Look at how quick that is. Even going from all the way in the back to the front is quick. Now let me zoom in. 600 millimeter. Whoa! Look at this. Boom! Boom! There's the lights in the back. Boom! A little slower there, but the focus throw is ridiculously long here. Oh, struggling a little bit there. And 600 millimeter. So that's very impressive if you ask me, guys. Here we are in the lab scene. And what I wanted to show you here is what this camera and lens combo can do in the real world. So as far as corner sharpness and things like that go. So as you can see here at 16 millimeter wide open f3.5, there is a little bit of noticeable vignette. Uh, you can see when I stop it down to f5.6, notice here in the corner, right here on the bottom left, you can see some of the shadowing coming in. Also, the corner sharpness is not the greatest wide open at f3.5. You can see it's just a little bit soft there. But when you stop it down f5.6, you can see how much it sharpens up. All right, and then the center is the center is very sharp, even wide open. At f3.5, you can see the center area is very sharp. See the background there? And in the foreground, you can see how the out of focus looks. Stop her down to f8, and it starts to sharpen up a little bit. And it's going to be really sharp in the center. You can see that detail is excellent. Now looking at 50 millimeter. This is wide open at f5.6, 50 millimeter. And you can see the corners are a little bit soft, but the detail in the center is excellent. Very sharp. And here's f8. This is actually a raw file at f8. I just wanted to show you what that looked like. And you can see the sharpness is very good. Detail is ridiculously good. And the corner sharpened up quite nicely, as you can see here. And a few more lab photos here. Oh, this is high ISO I wanted to show you. This is 51,000. And let me zoom in, show you some of the detail. You can see there, you can still read the numbers and letters, even though the ISO is maxed out at 51,200. So that's pretty impressive. It's very impressive actually and it's noticeably better than the A6000 in that regard due to the new copper wiring and thinner sensor which allows more light to come in it gives it a wider angle for light gathering and uh, here's ISO 40,000 just show you that real quick see the details very similar a little bit better we'll scroll down here to 25,000 here's 25,000 this is a raw file I got both RAW and JPEG here. They look very similar actually. Go down to 32 or 6400. Here's ISO 6400, which is usually where I max out the auto ISO unless it's super low light. And you can see here ISO 6400 looks excellent. And this is a RAW file. Detail is quite good. Not as good as the lower ISOs, but very good. This is ISO 3200. Another RAW file. You can see it gets even more detailed, a little bit cleaner here. And that's ISO 100 and you can see very very clean, nice crisp detail. Alright, now here's that illustration mode photo I took before when I was doing the lab and you can see just the artistic look that it gets. I, I absolutely love this feature. I've been raving about it ever since the RX100 Here's one more thing I wanted to show you. Remember when I took the Auto HDR in the lab before? Here's the Auto HDR versus a regular JPEG. So this is just a standard JPEG 
and here's the auto HDR so you could see how it brightens up the shadows and just gives you that look. Alright so moving on to some real world photos here's just a snapshot of Layla I took with the Tamron 150-600 to it's not really that sharp I was hand holding the uh, lens you really need to use a tripod with that monster but anyway here's with the kit lens and here's a few snapshots here's Bones Jones and it's raw versus JPEG. You can see a very similar. You can see slightly the uh, distortion there. Here's shooting into the sun. It's one of Jace. I thought this one came out pretty good. You can see some detail up close there. Obviously it's going to be washed out a bit due to the shooting into the sun like that, but the JPEG did a good job. You can see here's the raw image, much darker. The JPEG brightened it up quite a bit. That was just a shot of the bench there. Here's my buddy Layla. Look how cute she is. Here's a JPEG versus RAW file. And you can see the skin tones are a bit yellow on the RAW file, but I'm shooting in, you know, the sun is shining right at the end of the day. So uh, let me just show you the sharpness there. You can see the details excellent. Here's one of Jace. Little hamburger. See the RAW versus JPEG. Here's a RAW and here's the JPEG. It brightened it up quite a bit. And this is auto white balance, so you can see that it's a little bit cool. And uh, here's another one of Layla Bean, and the, she's playing in her uh, playground there. Here's Bones Jones hanging out, Just wants us to throw the ball. Here's my buddy Layla on the slide, having a good time. This is just the rope that holds the swing. I just wanted to show you how you can get background separation uh, quite easily with this combo. This is at 50 millimeter f5.6 and um, you get pretty close to your subject and the background will just butter right out. Here's Jace up on the slide. He's climbing up the ladder by himself already. Here he is, all excited. There's Layla. Not the best shot, but I just wanted to show you the detail of her eye, how sharp it is. You can see that detail. It's excellent. She's got really pretty eyes. There's Bones Jones. Here's another one of Bonesy. I took this one with the 600 millimeter, and I just wanted to show you the background, how it defocuses. Pretty awesome. The ISO was at 6400 because I was trying to get the shutter speed as fast as possible. I wasn't using a tripod. This one came out a little bit sharper, but again, the ISO is pretty high, and it's not razor blade sharp because I wasn't using a tripod. But uh, I just wanted to show you anyway. This one here is another one of the bottom of the trampoline zoomed in at 600 millimeter. Well, it's actually 900 approximately when you factor in the crop factor. And here's one of the fence. I just wanted to show you how you can get that fall off with a uh, lens like that. Here's the panoramic image here. I could zoom in and show you the detail. It's pretty darn good. Now this image I took uh, just a JPEG snapshot and uh, you can see it's not too shabby. The detail is pretty good. Colors, contrast, all that. That's a raw file. All right, so what I wanted to show you here is 16 millimeter, and notice the barn all the way down here. See how little it is? There's the barn, and you can see just how much you know you got in the scene. Then you zoom into 50 millimeter, and you can see here how much bigger the barn got, how much more detail you got. Now, when you strap on a monster like the Tamron 150 to 600, you could see what you get at 150 millimeter. 200 millimeter, 300 millimeter, 400 millimeter, 500 millimeter, and finally 600 millimeter. So 600 versus 16. Uh, you could see the barn's like a little speck here, and at 600 millimeter, or an effective 900 when you you know factor in the crop factor, that's what you get. So pretty amazing, and it's uh, looking through a lot of atmosphere as well. So there is going to be some atmospheric distortion. You know what I'm saying? But uh, overall, it looks pretty good for the uh, how far I was actually reaching. Now, this is across the mountain, across the way here. Here you can see across the mountain, it's like they're like little dots. That house is somewhere, I think it's right over here. It's one of these, there it is. It's that house there. Now look at it at 600 millimeter. See that? unbelievable. Again, I wasn't using a tripod like I should be. Now this one I took in landscape mode and I just wanted to show you how good of a job the camera did. It uh, jacked up the contrast a bit, jacked up the blues, created a nice blue and green scene there, and took a few more snapshots around the house. 
Here's one of Bones Jones. He's actually got his tongue out. Look at him. Big hamburger. And there's the detail there, so you can just see what kind of detail you can expect. It's pretty darn good. ISO 400. It's Layla's boot here. Just a test shot to show you some uh, background separation and whatnot. And here's another one of Layla chatting it up. <laughs> and I had this one on portrait mode, so you could see how it applied some skin smoothing and eye sharpening. Does a really good job, I think. And here's one I just took to show you what the separation looks like with the playground, and uh, so you can get an idea what to expect. And here's a couple illustration mode samples. I just wanted to show you how fun this illustration mode is. It's Layla Bean. And there's Jace climbing the ladder. This is Layla's cool garden collection up in her clubhouse there. And here's Bones Jones. Here's another one of Layla. This one, the photo came out a little bit pink looking there, but still, I like the shot. And here's Bonesy. That's what he looks like in illustration mode. <laughs> and here's Jace. Got a ball. He's working his way out down the steps there. It's doing pretty good. And look at Layla's hair. Crazy static hair. She was going up and down the slide. My buddy. She made a cool sad face. I thought it was funny. Alright guys, be sure to check out the main website for the latest reviews. Highly detailed written reviews with sample photos so you can see the high res versions and things like that. Unlike the YouTube channel, which you know you don't quite get the same detail in the videos, although the videos are pretty awesome. We got the forums over here and we got some photography challenges going on as well as Sony news and down here if you go to the e-mount cameras you can check out some of the articles we got going here. I have one for the A6300 in particular and I got all the quality reviews right in this one thread here so I'm just sharing them as they come out you know like DP review, you know, all the all the heavy hitters. But if you go to this thread, all of them are listed there. Lots of cool stuff going on on the forums. So I appreciate you guys checking out that. And here is the main Sony Alpha Lab channel. And you'd be sure to click back on here to check out and subscribe so you can, uh, you know, be aware when the new videos come out, things like that. Got a lot of tutorials as well, Sony how-to videos. And I also review some other gear occasionally if you want to check that stuff out. And I also got some Capture One video tutorials and Lightroom down below. So if you guys are looking to get more out of your software, be sure to check out those videos. Alright guys, so that is it for the Sony A6300 review. I really hope you got what you were looking for. I tried to cover everything that I thought mattered. And I also threw in the Tamron 150-600mm lens uh, information. You know, just a few sample photos and things like that. To show you what kind of reach and versatility you can get with a camera like this. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them below. I'll be happy to answer and help. And please let me know what you thought of the review, good or bad. It's uh, went a little bit longer than normal this time to try to cover a lot more hands-on how to use the camera and things like that as opposed to making shorter videos. So um, please give me some feedback on that, you know, good or bad below. And uh, again, links below. Appreciate the support and have a great day, guys.